Okay, welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Mark Pattison. Mark has played in the NFL for five seasons for the Raiders and the Saints and is a vested member of the NFL Players Association. As a successful entrepreneur, he started three multi-million dollar companies, including one of which was venture-backed and sold. Mark is now an executive for Sports Illustrated. He's on a quest to become the first NFL player ever to climb the seven summits. To date, Mark's climbed uh, six of the world's seven highest mountains with just Mount Everest left. Uh, and if that doesn't seem hard enough, Mark also plans to climb uh, Lotzi, I think that's how it's Lotzi, pronounced. Yeah. Lotzi, yeah. yeah. He's gonna climb that one. That's the fourth highest mountain within 24 hours of finishing Everest. Um, and there's less than 40 people that have ever done that. In this episode, he's gonna share a little bit about his journey and specific strategies that have helped him to overcome obstacles and achieve at the highest level. So welcome to Virtual School Assembly, Mark. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate being here. And Tyler, you're very kind in terms of your introduction to me. I think, you know, I am kind of at the front door of becoming the first NFL player to achieve this big goal that I set about eight years ago. But I think to kind of really understand that, like all things, you need to kind of go back and like reset, like where did you come from and how that, did that influence to where you are today? So, so just to put this thing in context a little bit, um, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. And for those of you who have never been to the great state of Washington um, in Seattle, um, uh, it's a very mountainous community. Uh, we've got the Cascades, and we've got the Olympic Mountains, and Seattle is kind of stuffed right in between these, and there's lots of water channels and everything else. So this is something that I grew up with. I spent a ton of time in the mountains um, doing nothing, you know, incredible, although I did climb uh, Mount St. Helens before it erupted. Uh, way back in the day, it was my first major climb my dad had taken me on. Um, so it's kind of iconic that 30 years ago, a few days ago, um, that that they had the anniversary of this gigantic volcanic eruption that looked like an atomic bomb going off. But a lot of that really kicked off like my, my passion for being in the mountains and being in the outdoors. Um, part of that was going, starting with my football is I was like a lot of kids, you know, unlike who's ever listening to this today, you guys have social media and we've got like 4,000 channels of TV that you can tap into and, and, and live stream and do all these other things. Back in the day, there was only three channels. And so I didn't really care that much about television and there weren't movies like they are today. And so I would go outside all the time and I was in the backyard playing with my buddies around the block. And I just had a special affinity towards football. And I really took that talent um, you know, through high school, things really started to pick up with some momentum, and I and I got the attention of a number of different schools, colleges around the country to go play uh, D1 football at, and so I ended up picking the University of Washington. It's about literally three miles from where I grew up. It's about two miles for, from where I went to high school, so I mean, I literally, I, I went, I didn't go beyond about six miles beyond on that circle, you know, until I was like, you know, 23 years old, and I left. But uh, one of the biggest things, and, and this was like, there was a couple of defining moments in my life that were, that were really, I think, pointing me in the direction that I needed to go. Um, and the first one was really coming out of high school and going into college. And I remember being on the sideline of that first day in fall camp when all the, uh, the players were out there. And I was looking at these 21, 22, 23 year old guys who had been in the program for a long time. And they were big and they were strong and they were gunned up. And I was not that guy. I'd never once lifted a weight. I had hadn't put any time into preseason conditioning. Um, I was six foot uh, two, 181 pounds. I could not bench my weight. So I was like, man, there was no way I can compete with these guys. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the chops. And I hadn't put any time into my craft. And so the hard decision for me, uh, my freshman year was kind of a rocky road. That that hard decision for me was either one take the the take the easy route out and quit, or put in the hard work. And there was an old famous coach named John Wooden, and John Wooden had created this thing called the Pyramid of Success, which are essentially these twenty five different individual and team blocks that when you put them all together. It's really about how you win a championship in whatever you do. It's just not, in this case, it was basketball. But in our case, it was football. My head coach had essentially adopted that same model 
And what I had to do is personalize it and say, look, if I ever have any chance of doing anything in my life, I'm going to have to put the time in the weight room. I'm going to have to put the time in the film study. I have to put the time in running stairs. I have to put the time in really learning the game of football. And the thing is that, that A plus B didn't equal C. In other words, if I put in all the time, and it took me three years to get there, but if I didn't put in the time, that didn't, or if I did put in the time, that didn't mean that I was going to be a starter. That didn't mean anything other than I was going to put myself in the best position to win. And that's what happened. And the first game, um, just as it all played out, and, and when I finally got my first start, uh, we were playing Michigan. They were playing in our, in, our, in our home stadium. It was a huge game. It was sold out. We were down by 14 points. We came back in the fourth quarter. We scored a touchdown, and now we're down to about two minutes. And as it would all play out, um, there was about 13 seconds left in the game, and they threw me the ball in the end zone. I jumped over the guy, caught the ball, the winning touchdown. And even though that moment was incredible and I was in Sports Illustrated um, and we went off and we had a very successful season, I had made that catch a thousand times in practice and in, and in, in visualizing it in my mind. And so, again, it was those building blocks is how I got there. And then we, we fast forward the clock and we, I go through, I, I go on, I play in the NFL and that was amazing and an incredible journey. We can dig down further on that. And then I get into my business life and some things went well for me that way. But again, I really had to take those same principles that I'd learned about the, the, the pyramid of success and apply those to business and working hard and doing all the different things I need to do to learn my craft. And then about 10 years ago, I was running into a, a, a wall. And that wall was this relationship that had been married for a long time has fallen apart. And so... Um, Ultimately, it, in a divorce, it was awful. But the thing that helped pull me out of that, in that bad space that I was in was going back to the things that made me successful when I was much younger. And so the biggest thing I had to do is pick a large goal that was out there in front of me. We call it a BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal, right? So something that a stretch is something like, hey, I'm going to run five miles and you go out and run five miles. Maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. A big stretch is something that you know, it's almost impossible to do, but there is a, some realm of possibility that this actually can happen. And so I'd done some research. Um, I knew I wanted to do something athletic, and I discovered that no NFL player had ever climbed seven summits. Being from Seattle, idolizing all these famous mountaineers that come out. We have a, a big mountain that's up there called Mount Rainier. Um, it's like a mini uh, Mount Everest in terms of it throws a lot of different things at you. Um, it certainly isn't as high or it's not on the scale of, of Mount Everest. Uh, but, um, you know, the wheel started spinning. I'd climbed brain near, I'd done some other peaks. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to be that guy. And that really set Pat forth this path. And at that same time, you know, I, 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 I had to like clear my mind, which climbing did being in nature did, um, conditioning did. Um, having that goal, but doing all the training it takes to lead up to that event. And the first one, you know, I went down to Tanzania and I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. It's actually the highest mountain from the bottom to the top. A lot of these mountains, you have to go up to a certain altitude. So it's, it's 19,333 feet, got down there, overcame some things, made it happen. Um, then the next year I found myself in Russia climbed a mountain called uh, Mount Elbrus. It's the highest mountain in, in Europe. Then I went down to Australia and climbed a small mountain. I called the Fun 7 called Mount Kosciuszko. And then the next year, I went off to South America into Argentina, a mountain called uh, Aconcagua, just under 23,000 uh, people. We started at 12 people in our climbing party. Only six made it. It was an incredible journey. So really a test of how you can do an altitude, high altitude, um, and then, uh, and then the next year I went off to Denali, which is located in, in North America and in, in, in Alaska. And the, and, and this was in 2017, we were hit by uh minus 80, uh, storm up on top. So at the end of the day, I was not able to com complete, um, that. So I went back again in 2018 and I was able, we had a really nice stretch of weather, got it done. Timing was everything super cold but we got it, take the top. So happy to say I never have to go to that mountain. And then 2019, 
I was down in Antarctica, which is a completely unique place on the planet. Um, and I was able to climb a mountain called Vincent Massif. And then this year I'd been training like an animal already to get ready for um, Mount Everest. And then the world blew up with COVID-19 and here we sit today. And so it, I was disappointed for sure for 24 hours. Once I got through that, I reset my mind. I had to make the hard pivot. And I literally took my plane ticket, my climbing permit, um, my, my, my insurance around it, everything, and said, you know what? I'm just going to push this out to uh, 2021, the exact same dates, and let it roll. And actually started looking at it, which I'm doing now, as an opportunity to get bigger, to get faster, to get stronger, and work more on my craft rather than what a big bummer. Yeah. Now, Mark, as you talk about these BHAGs, these big, hairy, audacious goals, uh, obviously you've been setting and accomplishing goals all your life. Um, but I think it's hard sometimes for kids to think beyond this year, or next year, or five years down the road, because for them, the BHAGs might be to be elected to student council or to make the team or to get straight A's. What is it that you've done to continue to accomplish things throughout your life so that when you finished one thing, you didn't just celebrate and live there forever, but then you could set your next goal and go accomplish your next thing? Well, remember, we're talking as I sit here today, I'm much older than your audience, you know, as we sit here and talk. And, and so as we unpack everything, there wasn't Sports Illustrated and there wasn't the NFL and there wasn't um, these big mountains around the world, right? That wasn't even on the map. But if, as you take a look back from, uh, from, from the top where I am today all the way back and from the back all the way to where I am today. So in either side of how you look, there, everything is connected. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I tell people and I tell students is, look, somebody asked me this question the other day and they said, Mark, did you have the NFL on your mind when you're in high school? And the answer was no, I didn't. I didn't I didn't see myself in that realm because I, I hadn't done the work. I hadn't put myself in that position. And, you know, I, I saw like an NFL player is like superhuman and something that I just wasn't because I wasn't that person. Right. And mm -hmm. and I used to dream about playing in, in in college and you know this is USC versus Washington and you know I'm this player and you're that player and we used to you know pretend and to have these fake games in our backyard around that but what I've learned over time and my message to 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 any kid that is listening is that success leaves clues right and so the, 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 the biggest thing that I can say is that you're, you, you may not know exactly what you want to do or how your life is going to look. I don't think anybody knows that, right? Because you haven't done any of these things. And so how could you possibly know exactly what you want to do if you haven't had that kind of experience? But the best thing you can do is pick out some people that have done that, have, that have already gone through all the mistakes, and you can go talk to them. You can be mentored by them. You can have them give advice. And the one thing, too, the second beyond, number one, success leaves clues, find a mentor. The, the, the next one is action creates reaction, right? So a lot of people get stuck because they start thinking about maybe I'd want to do this. But then somehow or another, they have this internal voice that ultimately makes them stuck because they haven't activated anything to go figure out, is that really the right thing or the wrong thing to do? And so I think that any kind of action, you have an idea, you start to research it, hmm, what would that be like? Maybe find a mentor, um, action creates reaction, maybe go and intern um, for that company, that person, and really start to figure out, like, is this something that you're aligned with, which you're good at? But that's the only way you're going to figure these things out if you just roll up your sleeves and you get back again to that once you start to really uh, lock in on that thing that you want to do, go back to that pyramid of success and start really understanding what those 25 blocks are going to mean to you in terms of individual and team goals to get to the very, very top of that, that, that pinnacle of whatever you're trying to do. Great. Now, I know a lot of kids have big dreams and, and they're looking forward to, you know, their Super Bowl moment or their Rudy moment. And then it comes and goes, and, and I've known too many successful people that they accomplish that one big thing, and then they stop, 
what has it been for you that has helped you continue uh, to, to work hard and, and to sustain that drive over a long period of time? Well, I think, you know, resetting your goals constantly because change does happen, right? Okay. Like, I mean, for me, you know, playing in, 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 in college football and things going well and being very fortunate that I was drafted into the NFL and then go playing in the NFL. And now I'm 29 years old and it was like literally driving off a cliff, right? Because I had been doing this one thing for so long and at a very high competitive level. And then I was like, oh my gosh, now what? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I had to like reset my mind and like, what is this new goal going to be? So, you know, I, I think again, just, you know, sticking with the process. Um, I think far too many people too start to get into things. And when things not going exactly the way they want them to go, they quit. And I think that's one of the things that I haven't done. I've, I've seen this as, as things I've wanted to do is kind of a long play of, of going back to when I was a freshman. I knew I was going to play anytime soon. There were better players in front of me, but I knew that if I stuck with it and over time, if I put myself in the best position that I, I certainly have an opportunity to, to become a starter. And ultimately I did. And then I performed because I'd done this cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste reputation time over time, over time. And you know, at the very top of that pyramid of success too, um, the pinnacle, with, 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 with that really, that championship, um, um, competitive greatness is what they call it. When you really break that down to get that competitive greatness, if you want to be successful at something, at the end of the day, you have to have that passion and you have to love the process. So I can tell you this, on, on Mount Everest, for example, that I'm headed to now this next year, um, more than being on Mount Everest, which I'm jacked up to be on, and, and more than these other um, mountains that I've stood on top of, what I've loved more than that is the, the process of training, the process of running up the mountain every day, the process of doing CrossFit every morning, the process of doing all this research and every single square foot of the mountain that I know that when I hit Everest, I'm going to be in the best mental place because it's a two month expedition. You just don't show up and go home and you're sleeping on rocks and you're sleeping on ice and it's uncomfortable and it's not fun. So what can I do to make myself uncomfortable? And I think for me uh, right now is I, you know, this is the wheelhouse I'm in today is the more physically demanding that I can put my body through. I know it's going to make me more mentally tough when things get difficult and I want to quit, but because I've been through this training and it's been this cut and repeat, cut and paste that I haven't quit. I haven't pushed me back. And that's what helps me sustain and go forward on these things that I do. And, you know, people have said to me, Hey, Mark, you know, so this is going to be your, your last one. Is that it? And what has done more than anything is help me see, like I've done some cool things, but, but all the things in the world that we haven't done, right. It's endless. So there should never be a point where I should say that's it. Right. I should figure out something for me. It's probably going to be physical, but for to, 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 to continue down the same path, um, and loving the process and then going doing something new and unique and part of this whole thing wrapped up into this is the adventure of that thrill for that ride of new discovery right i i can certainly um uh, empathize with this idea that once we accomplish one thing it it is the process i uh, a few years ago i lost 100 pounds and and in the process i, w I wanted to run a race so i put a, a race on the calendar so I ended up running a marathon and the best part of that marathon was the training. And then knowing that when I got done, it wasn't over. It's okay. Well, what's the next race? So this last year I did a double marathon. So I did a 52 wow. mile run. And, and as soon as that got over and I have some foot conditions and, and things that probably won't make it possible for me to go to a hundred miler, but I, I, you know, immediately was, okay, what's the next challenge? What's the next thing? And, and I love your tenacity. One thing I, I want to, to kind of pick your brain on a little bit is I, I followed your journey and, I, and I've listened to some of your podcast episodes. And, and so I've kind of followed along as you've been getting ready for this climb, which should have taken place in April. Um, and I noticed that as that came and as the world changed, you mentioned that you kind of grieved for 24 hours and then moved on. And I know that's true because I kind of heard this in real time as you did your shows that, you know, I can't control this, but what I can do is make plans for the future. 
kids are now in a similar you know, uh, situation where the world has changed radically and they're having to change their plans, they're having to pivot and, and set new goals. What advice would you give them as far as just maintaining that positive attitude? Because I think that's what I love most about your journey is it wasn't a major set, well, it was a major setback, but it wasn't something that changed your trajectory. You're still moving forward. How is that possible for you that you could maintain that positive attitude and continue to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Because I'm doing something every single day towards that goal, right? The goal hasn't changed. The target date has moved, but the goal hasn't changed. And I think one of the things and the best things that people can do again right now, so we're, we're dealing today is May 22nd. I ironically would have been going for the top of Everest today as we speak on this podcast. Mm. And, and that, that is what it is. And so um, for these last two or three months, when the world has been shut down and no business, um, there's no going out to dinner. Um, we've all had the same experience. I've never watched so many movies in my life on Netflix. <laughs> Um, but I do work all the time and my days feel full of that. But w w one of the things that, that I have, I've continued to do is like, what can I do to hone my game? And I think when, when too many people, like when circumstances hit, they let circumstances affect that the way they continue to approach their life, you know, going forward. And I look at that slightly different, like, man, what a great opportunity to learn, to roll up your sleeves, to go on this on the internet. And there's this little friend, it's a little secret named Google. And you can type in anything, like how do I grow my social media? I mean, for example, this is a good example. We'll, we'll stick on social media for a minute. So I'm at 19,500 feet on a mountain called Aconcagua, we talked about a little while ago, which is, um, which is South America's highest peak. And, and I was up there for three days and we're in this tent and we're prepping to go f make a summit bid. And, and so I was doing some journal writing and, and through that journal writing, I was like, you know what? I haven't really ever announced any of this stuff, um, what I'm doing. And if I ever have a, a chance to, to maybe get some sponsorship dollars or anything, I should probably start to try to grow my audience, right? I had no clue how to create a Facebook page how to create a Twitter. I didn't know much about Instagram. I didn't know about any of these things, right? And so I, I, I got back from the trip. We summited, got back, got back to the States. And, and I did all this research, again, tapped into my little friend named Google and said, how do you grow a Facebook page? And how do you do this? And how do you do that? And I, I've learned and every single day I work towards that goal. This is as of three years ago. And now my audience is well over 400,000 people. And, you know, and so this is a great example of like, I didn't grow up in the digital age the way probably all your students today grew up with a cell phone in their pocket. And so I've had to do the extra learning on trying to educate myself by making the point of today, you know, why we're sequestered in our house. And I know that we're starting to merge out of this, but what a great opportunity to work towards some goal to create better skills for yourself and anything that you may have an interest in. Yeah. Now that warms my heart as a teacher to hear that you're a lifelong learner and that you're figuring things out. Uh, I want to just uh, go back in time a little bit because I know that you are a lifelong learner, that you have taken different pivots throughout your life and, and started new businesses and tried new ventures. Uh, and even pre cell phone and pre Google, you were doing that. Um, what is it that you did even you know, as young as high school or elementary school, that kind of instilled those values of, I'm gonna to continue to learn, I'm gonna to continue to grow. Uh, and how have you maintained that throughout your life? I think it's a one simple answer. Um, well, maybe there's more than one simple, but, but I, th I think it's the power of curiosity. I think that is the key ingredient. And I think that if you're a curious person and you're going, hmm, that's interesting, well, how do they do that, right? Things aren't magic. I mean, there's a few people on the planet, uh, Steve Jobs might be one of them, that literally almost like created time travel, right? In, in right. the sense of, of or the, whoever, whoever invented the internet. I mean, those are like revolutionary things, but most of the things that we do are always recreating and creating a better widget than the last person, right? Mm -hmm. um, Airbnb, right? Creating an experience. Those guys 
rather people can go stay in other people's homes um, and pay versus staying in a hotel. It's just creating a better, better widget. Um, Uber, right? Creating a better experience, um, going around in somebody's car, you know, and somebody turns around and hands you a bottle of water than jumping in some greasy taxi, right? And being boxed in, you know, with the plexiglass, you know, in the, in the back seat, and most of those cars are in air conditioned. So it's just the power of curiosity. That's one. And then the second thing is the ability to listen. You know, somebody asked me, Mark, what makes a great salesperson? And it's kind of counterintuitive because you think a great salesperson is a person who has all the knowledge, which counts, and a person who's got a great rap, which counts. But actually, the most effective way is when you go in and you just sit there and you tee up one or two questions and you sit back and listen, and they will feed you all the answers and give you all the clues on what they're lacking or what they're missing or what they want. And then it's your job to go in like, hmm, that's interesting, rather than just start talking. So power of curiosity uh, and ability to listen. That's fantastic. Well, Mark, I really appreciate your time today. If kids want to learn more about you, uh, where, where can they go to find out more? Yeah, thank you. Hey, I invite any kid that wants to come and reach out. I, I do want to be that mentor for them. Success leads clues. If I can be of any assistance in, in that guidance, I'm, I always uh, respond back. The best place people can reach me um, in my all my social channels are, are up there as well is my website, which is www.markpattisonnfl.com. And there's actually even a countdown to Everest clock on there that you can check out. There's a blog and there's some other cool thing. All my podcasts are, are located there. I've got some really cool people that uh, have come on the show. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely link that up and, and do check out the blog. I've read a few of his articles and great if you're looking at leadership and, and accomplishing great things. So some awesome things there on the website. Thanks again, Mark. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much.